Everybody can use a good flashlight. Civilians, military types, law enforcement types, doctors, nurses, repairmen, firemen, you name it, who can't use a superior quality flashlight? If they say they don't need one, then they've just never used one. And in the Nut and Fancy project, I will occasionally profile some of the, my favorite lights that will serve in these functions perfectly. And here comes another one. This one is coming fresh off a battery of tests by me, nothing fancy, throughout the country in all types of different situations and scenarios, both in duty and personal use. And I will say this light is another winning product from Phoenix. It is an upgraded version of the previously reviewed in the nothing fancy project, Phoenix L1D. There it is in olive drab. Well, that's a cool coloration. And that also has proven to be just an outstanding little light from Phoenix. These are not the only brands I like, by the way. Um, there's other ones, and I may roll them in into this review of the LD20 by way of comparison, but Phoenix gets a lot of things right, and they're continually upgrading and improving their product line. And here is a case in point. The Phoenix LD20 has several improvements over the L1D. None of them are earth-shaking or revolutionary. More, they're evolutionary and just are some minor, some are actually more than minor improvements on the light. We'll cover those as I go through my tabletop review, uh, hitting all the specifics, and I have got a lot of talking to do, so we need to start cruising. Couple of disclaimers, like I always say. I am not the end-all expert on lighting products. There are guys that devote their whole lives to these flashlights, flashaholics. Actually, I'm a flashaholic too. I'm just not professional level. In other words, I don't devote like all day, every day to these lights. I just don't have time. But I sure do love them. And just like I said at the beginning, the reason why is because they are system transforming. When you get a superior quality light like the LD20, it transforms your system. Um, and I'll say, I'll say why as we go down here. Let's start it off. Lots to go. Size and weight. By no sh uh, small coincidence, it's about the same size and weight of the previous L1D. 3.2 ounces wearing two Sanyo Inaloop rechargeable batteries, and that's what this one has. If, if you go with the small, or I'm sorry, the lighter lithium batteries, like the Energizer Lithium, these ones right here, it's going to lighten it up by about half an ounce. And I recommend those more expensive and disposable batteries if you absolutely positively need your light to work for you, especially in colder climates like I've shown you up in the mountains. Uh, that way the lithiums just won't let you down. Sometimes rechargeables will. I will say the Inalute batteries are outstanding for daily use, for EDC use. Uh, love them. And this is one running the 2000 milliamp varieties and that too will probably be continually improved as time goes on. Now remember in my video, shedding some light on new lighting technologies, again, you'll see that in annotation right there. We discussed what is happening or what has already happened in the field of lighting. And in the vid, I told you that upgrades and improvements will continue in this technology. It is not a static technology and you can see the LD20 proves out exactly what I was talking about. A uh, couple things to say in this regard. One, don't be afraid to buy into the technology now and don't think, well, I'm going to wait another year until lighting is just perfect. Uh, I wouldn't wait. Go ahead and get it. In fact, let's go back to the L1D. Now, some will say, well, that's an, uh, you know, an obsolete light because it's been superseded in the Phoenix product line by the LD20. Not true. The Phoenix L2D is one of my primary duty lights and I have not replaced it, nor do I have any plant plans to replace it. That's because it just works so well. It's lightweight, compact, durable.
durable, very bright. Uh, the multi modes are extremely functional for what I do. Absolutely love it. It fits in my POU perfectly, as it does many of my military buddies, and they're not planning on replacing theirs either. Even though the LD20 has come out, still going to use L2D in a lot of different ways. So, yes, when you buy a lighting product, a computer, it's the same thing. It's a snapshot in time. A snapshot, a snapshot in the technological timeline. So you'll make your pick. But truly, these, lighting, uh, these lights have become so good, so bright and last adequately on the batteries, you're not going to go wrong. The, L2, the LD20, therefore, is the same size and weight of its uh, predecessor, and that means it's compact, easy to carry, very slim in size. By way of contrast, I uh, can't speak, contrast, here is the Nightcore D20, and I'll do a separate tabletop on that. And I don't want to get bogged down on the features of, the, uh, features of this light. I want to be time-pressed as it is. But the LD20 blows it away in terms of compactness and actually, more importantly, weight. 5.2 ounces, and that's with lithium batteries. It'll be about 5. I don't know, 6, 7 ounces with uh, rechargeable cells. But the LD20 is a full on 2 plus uh, something ounces lighter than this light. As you can see, it's also thinner through the barrel. Uh, some guys won't care. Some guys might like the uh, the thickness of the Nightcore D20. Um, I like the smallness of LD20 better. It's smaller, more compact. Against another competitor, also an outstanding light. And every light I'm showing you here is just superb. Uh, I would not be rolling them in front of the camera if it were not so. I only want to profile, at least as of now in TMP, the best products. Quark, Double A Square, Tactical. Put out by 4.7s, another great light, has a UI or user interface, very similar to the LD20, but it is a little bit thicker, as you can see, than the LD20. Probably one of the smallest lights around, wearing two AA cells, LD20, is going to be a great companion, however you decide to put it into use. It could be an everyday carry light, a duty light, a light for your survival kit, urban or wilderness. Uh, it could be your duty light. I, I think I already said that. As a police officer, nurse, doctor, whatever. Just small, compact, easy to take along. And about the same size as L1D, like I said. How's the construction? There's a lot to cover on this because there are some differences between the two models and other lights for that matter as well. The LD20, let's start off at the emitter head or the control head. Several differences here. You can see on the right, the LD20 now wears a crenellated bezel. That is, it has those shallow scallops in the rim of the bezel. Not really functional in the purpose of a strike bezel as some lights have. By the way, I'm generally a fan of those strike bezels. I think that's probably in contrast to a lot of other flashaholics that don't like them. That's because I intend to employ it in the POU of perhaps defensive role if the need arises. This one is not that way. It's more for looks, more for design. Maybe you can make an argument, well, not just that. If you place the light down, head down, you can see the light bleeding out from the crenellations to remind you that you left it on. Okay, fair enough. In the reflector area, lots of changes. Uh, on the left, the Phoenix L1D wears a very orange peely reflector, as I discussed in that review video. My understanding is the more orange peel it has, the more diffused the lighting beam will be. There's other considerations. It's not just uh, the reflector. I understand that. However, uh, look on the right. The LD20 reflector is smoother. Still wears a minor or a shallow orange peel in the reflector. But uh, it is a redesigned reflector. And that is a meaningful improvement on the LD20 as bragged about on the box. Newly, des newly designed reflector. Outstanding beam shots. Yep. I have proven that with my own testing, and we'll talk about that, show it more when I get down there to uh, throw and burn times. Uh, where's the same XRE Q5 Cree LED? I have noted, by the way, uh, I'll say this now, there is a little bit of difference in hue. This one has kind of a greener tint to me and my eyes. The LD20 has kind of a cooler blue, or cool white is better said, tint on that, but love it. Both have the anti-reflective coated glass lenses, which have proven very effective. And let me say, I've been using these Phoenix lights a lot. 
a lot of different ones. The P3Ds on a lot of different weapons in the Nut and Fancy project, as you've seen, have been serving just outstandingly. They've been going under a lot of hardware. Uh, most of them are already on guns. This one's just kind of one out of box to show you what I'm talking about. I haven't found that glass to scratch at all, uh, including my heavily used L1Ds and headbands, too. So very durable. Tail cap design has been changed on the LD20. No longer is it fully enclosed like you see on the left. Uh, I did like and do like that design, but now it has kind of an open channel and some protective ears which form lanyard grooves, not just holes, but grooves for attachment to the lanyard. In this review video, I criticized the sharp edges that it had and it would cut your lanyard as it did mine. I showed that in the review and I advocated putting on a split ring, kind of like how you doing 4.7s does automatically from the factory. Huh, wonder if they've been watching nothing fancy videos. Um, because that is a great way to prevent any cutting of your lanyard. But I don't know if you need that on the LD20 because the surfaces on that lanyard slot are beveled to the best of my knowledge, and you can see that right there. And it has not as of yet cut the included lanyard with light. It functions perfectly. Little bit differences in the tail cap coloration-wise. Texturing on the tail caps is identical in my opinion. Um, can you still stand this light on, on end? This is an important consideration because this light, as I will show later in the vid, can function as a lantern. This one, the L2D, stands readily. This one, losing some of that support, you might have to work on a little bit as you slide or have slid your lanyard to slide, the side. But yeah, you can stand it up on end. Great job. The knurling has been improved on the LD20 as well. It is functional, kind of like jimping. On the L2D, it was nothing more than pretty much aesthetic, as you can see right here. It didn't provide any traction to the hand, so to speak, because it wasn't. It was flat, bunch of flat squares. Now on the LD20, it's more purposeful. Not huge. It doesn't totally bite into the hand, but it is an improvement. Also has a run there on the tail cap as well. In the construction area, and this is kind of jumping ahead to ergonomics or ergos, um, pretty much the same design. You can see that they have a stepped aluminum body. I think it's 6,000 series aircraft aluminum. Tough, rugged. Uh, if you break it, then you're probably abusing your light, in my opinion, because uh, I've put these lights under some hard use. Haven't done it yet. And then notice it goes narrow through the body. That is so perhaps you can use it in a cigar carry with a handgun. I don't use that very often, uh, but you can do it. I think that is the thinking behind it. And slim is better though, because it makes it easier and more compact to carry. Another improvement on the LD20, anti-roll bezel. See those flats? Prevents the light from going bye-bye on your desktop. Something that the L1D, at least without the lanyard, uh, kind of had a problem with. You can see rolling all over the place. So another improvement on the LD20. That will take us to waterproofness. And lots to discuss on this. I got to hurry with it because I'm already short on time. Uh, IPX standard, that is the IPX-8 waterproof standard, is what is touted on most of the Phoenix lights. Same for the LD20. What does that mean? There's a lot of discussion about this and a lot of confusion. Uh, but as I stated in the L1D video, uh, it means that about 12 feet... For 24 hours, the light will be waterproof under static water pressure, meaning that the light is just sitting there. It's not being moved. If I start to move or shake the light around, that is dynamic water pressure, and it's going to be something less. To me, that's kind of an arbitrary waterproof standard. And also, I've heard different variations on what all the IPX waterproof standards mean. Let me break it down for you this way. In the Nut and Fancy project, me, Nut and Fancy, I'm going to start conducting what I call the water barrel test. As you can see, I purchased a water barrel, cut the lid out of it, and filled it with 55 gallons of water. And it is going to function as a testing bed for all these lights that I'm going to do tabletop reviews on. To me, this is a realistic waterproof standard. Three feet of water, both static for at least 30 minutes and dynamic water uh, pressure loads will prove whether this light will uh, be waterproof for most users under most conditions. Probably in the future I will do some more extreme testing, i.e. deeper water, different conditions, you'll see that. 
but for now I think the water the flashlight water barrel by Nut and Fancy is a realistic way to show users that the light is waterproof. I did not expect the LD20 in any degree to fail in this test and sure enough it did not. Uh, that's because I've used a lot of O-ring sealed products throughout the years for a long time, both flashlights, cameras, uh, different lighting products to know uh, that it's just going to uh, you know, excel at the test. The LD20 did not fail, did not surprise me. It was just fine, as did many of the other lights. Just perfect. Now, yes, it's just three feet, but still it is a water test and it's not in a bathtub. And you will have a little bit of water pressure, yes, even at three feet, to test the O-rings on your lights. Um, most users are not going to use this as a dive light, and that is appropriate. If you want a dive light, buy a dive light. The Phoenix LD20 is not that. But if you drop it into some water, or if you need to use it in a search function underwater for something else you dropped or someone else you've dropped, it's kind of nice to know the LD20 will not let you down. I am very confident it will go much deeper and remain uh, retain its waterproofness as well. The LD20 is tightly sealed with its O-rings as we screw off the tail cap here. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. The only concern you should have is as time goes by, if that O-ring becomes shredded, cut, or worn, make sure that you watch for that and you replace it. In the accessories package that's included with every Phoenix light, you have a rubber, extra rubber switch and two extra O-rings. There's your split ring that Phoenix now includes. Interesting. And just keep it replaced, it'll be fine. While we're here and talking of construction, look at the threads. They're anodized threads. A little bit has been made of newer products, kind of like the 4.7's Quark AA Tactical, uh, that they're squared threads and that that's a more effective design. I think it is, but I think the difference is nominal. I wouldn't sweat it at all. I have used these threads now for well over a year in a lot of different situations in all my different Phoenix lights and I have never had any problem with cross threading or thread failure. I generally put a little dab of scuba silicone grease on there. This one doesn't have it yet um, and that makes it a little easier to screw on. On the top side where the emitter head screws on, notice that those are not anodized. Okay, They're just bare aluminum and that's because they do not intend for you to take that head off very frequently. And there's really no reason to unless you're experimenting with some swap rounds with Phoenix lights. But the threading, very effective, as is the waterproofness. I give it uh, A plus in waterproofness as I took it apart with all my testing. Absolutely no water ingress into the light whatsoever. So construction, durable, waterproof, you betcha. Ergos kind of talked about that already. It is superior. Uh, to a lot of different lights and again I do prefer the th more slim light in a lot of ways that longer light like I mentioned in my L1D review is easier to grasp easier to find in the dark and more ergonomic how about the switch um, kind of jumping ahead and user interface I'll talk more about it um, but the switch is a tactile click on click off now some guys will prefer this one and some guys might prefer the piston design night core, which is not tactile, it's quiet and silent, as you access the beam and have a ramping capability to access, or let me say, produce different lighting levels. Um, I love that tactile click though, because in my loud environments, it's a great way to both hear and feel that the light has come on. That goes under ergonomics. Brightness and throw. Again, this is a big subject. I have to hurry because it's hard to fit all this information in in one video. A whole book could be, or a whole video could be made about this. Very similar to the L2D in some ways, and yet very different in other ways. Let me go ahead and dovetail you into my in-room testing of the two lights, and you can see uh, the differences in beam patterns and my narration. Be right back. Turbo mode, lithium batteries, just amazing. L2D, still an outstanding light, has not been superseded in terms of brightness at all. Just outstanding. I love this light. Now let's go head to head with its successor, the LD20, using in loop batteries. Now you can kind of see the beam difference here, and again, both are on turbo mode. So on the right hand side, the LD20 is brighter. And this is running in a loop batteries, not lithium. 
lithium on the left and loops on the right. Get a little disregard this portion right there because that's uh, kind of some bleed over due to the camera. So LD20 in turbo mode is much more culminated. We'll throw the beam probably a farther distance, very concentric. LD20, I'm sorry, the L2D, a little broader the beam pattern is compared to the LD20. Then let's go to the other modes, side by side. LD20 on the right, much better culmination and focusing. Uh, the spill beam is much more concentric and tight than on the L2D on the left hand side. Back to, then we go to medium, one more tap on the back of the switch. And same thing, tighter culminated beam on the right hand side, a lot more spillover, less culmination on the L2D. Hmm, didn't know it would be such a great difference, but it is. Then we go to high mode. Also kind of a greenish tint on the Cree LED, the Q5 L2D. LD20 has a wider bluish tint to it, which I prefer. That's in high mode. Opinion says LD20 wins. Yeah, baby. Okay, as you saw, differences. This one is more culminated. It has a more defined hot spot. Let's throw it in a turbo mode. Kill this light. As opposed to the L1D. The L1D, by the way, might be hard to find these days uh, because it is superseded by this model. But you can see there is a difference between the beam patterns. Also in hues, like I mentioned, slightly greener, slightly cooler white. Both have outstanding spill beams. The Coronas are generally very precise. Very few artifacts in the beams. And uh, between the two, though, I think most users would love the LD20 better. That newly or the newly designed reflector is a big improvement. In my urban testing of this light, taking it in no kidding urban environments, I found the LD20 to be much more substantial in its throw versus the L2D. Uh, 25 meters easily, it can throw an effective beam all the way out to 50 meters, not as diffused, more concentrated, um, as you can see, that it really throws for a double A flashlight an amazing amount of light. And multi-modes too, we'll talk about that here in a second, but the LD20 for its range is a big improvement. Some users may not like that. They might uh, like the L2D a little bit better. More diffused lighting. For closer range lighting, maybe the L2D, for some people, they'd like better. But the spill beam still on the LD20, very effective, as you saw, functions great. How about some other competitors? Rolling it against the Nightcore D20, I found the LD20, this one, the Phoenix light, to be brighter by a substantial margin and that's with the D20 using lithium batteries and the Phoenix light using rechargeable cells. Usually it's the other way around that lithium batteries will produce a brighter more intense light in my own testing. Not so Phoenix L2D blew it away in terms of brightness and as you can see in my ceiling tests uh, the differences are very noticeable. That's not to say that the Nightcore D20 uh, the D20 is not an outstanding light. It is. It does offer some advantages over the Phoenix light, i.e. the ramping capability and you can go to lower lighting modes, which maybe we'll discuss here in a little bit. So brightness is outstanding. Burn times. I'm going to use and discuss factory burn times. Like I've said in some other videos, you can easily go to the internet and find guys that have put this under some real world tests and say, hey, this is what I got out of these cells under these conditions, and that is useful. However, as you can see scrolling across the screen, Phoenix gives us the burn times measured in lumens, and again, that might not be the best standard of measurement since that kinda talks about uh, the total amount of light over an area versus, I don't know, lux, which is intensity of light at a given point, but Phoenix does talk lumens, and that's what I'll stick with. 12, uh, actually nine lumens for 71 hours. Again, on the package box, it brags about this. 
and that will talk to its survival light capability. That's kind of what the manufacturers refer to it as. And that low mode is very nice to have. In fact, it's probably going to be one of your most used modes. As I go into general mode by loosening the bezel to the right, clicking it on, that's the low mode. And hopefully the camera can capture all that. Um, the reason I like low mode so much is because generally I'm operating in night environments in my job or jobs, both of them. And uh, I don't have to slam on a red filter if I don't want to. I can if I want to, but I don't have to when it can go very low. And this is an improvement over the L2D, which went to 12 lumens, and the one on the right a little bit dimmer. We always talk about brightness levels, don't we, between the two lights? Uh, we should, you can see that L2D, by the way, how it's brighter. LD20 on the right, L2D on the left, both in the lowest modes they have. But we always discuss the brightness level. How bright can it go? And this bright, this light can go bright. As we go to turbo mode, 180 lumens is what the manufacturer tells us for about 2.0 hours. You're never going to get that generally. It's going to be less in my experience. Uh, probably about 30 to 40 percent less. If you're using some fatigued rechargeable cells, ones that have been used like a lot, expect uh, less performance. But generally, that's what you'll get. Um, but we always fixate on that brightness, and that is a very important function, especially when we're doing searching duties. But the dim mode is outstanding. Uh, maybe not as outstanding as the night core, though. The night core goes dimmer still, and that's one thing I really love about the D10, the D20, is they have that moonlight mode, as they call it, and this is dimmer still. If you have your night vision in effect, Going into moonlight mode is a great way to preserve it and not kill it without having to use that red filter. So overall, the LD20 in terms of brightness uh, and in terms of modes is outstanding. The burn times between the L2D, LD20 are very similar. The digital regulation perhaps isn't. And remember, when we talk about the regulation, that is a microprocessor that is included in these lights that allows their battery supplies to provide constant energy to the emitter head. At least that's the way I understand it. In the olden days, the light would dim and flicker and come on and off um, because they were not digitally regulated. No longer is that the case and your regulator, digital version, will do the best to get as much power as it can out of the light. The L2D, uh, its regulation was kind of different. What would happen is the cells ended their useful life, it would go very dim. The LD20 actually just turns off in my experience. So some guys will say that's a tighter regulation. It's maximizing power from whatever cells you've cho chosen. And that is an improvement also in the LD20. Burn times are adequate. Let's review the modes and the user interface on the LD20 very quickly. Again, if we go to the right, we've loosened the bezel. That takes us into what is called general mode. Turn on the light with a tactile click. That takes us to low. One light tap on the back of the switch will take us to medium. And they tell us that's about 47 lumens again. One more tap takes us up to 94 lumens. That's your high mode. And then one more mo or soft tap, as I'll call it, takes us to SOS. Now, if we rotate that bezel to the left, to the tightened position, there's turbo mode. And then we tap once more, takes us to strobe mode in the Phoenix LD20. Nowadays, I'm very uh, partial to that strobe mode for a reason you probably might not have thought of. I probably some of you guys have. And that is as a safety light when you're biking or zootering. It is outstanding. It is very visible from long distances, as you've seen. You can see the guy coming with his Phoenix light a long way away, and that enhances safety. Uh, as far as uh, disabling a perp or confusing a perpetrator, I don't know. Nice to have, but that strobe function for both signaling and as a safety light, very useful to have. I like the modes on the Phoenix. I think they're simple, they're easy to access, they're easy to understand. I've used them for some time now and they're second nature to me. Some guys may not like having to tap through the soft tap on the end to access the different modes. I don't care, I find it extremely fast. Now, by way of contrast, the Nightcore series, the piston drive, double A lights or single A lights and all the other ones they have, again, don't have that tactile click. They have a different way of accessing the light. There are some shortcuts so like when the light is off, 
You can do uh, the three tap and hold for high, if I can do that. And this is kind of a problem, there it is, uh, with the, the night core lights in my estimation. I understand how to access it, I understand the shortcuts, but sometimes, uh, since you don't really get a feedback on whether you've pressed the piston button down all the way, especially with gloves, that's another reason I'm wearing gloves, um, you don't get the feedback. You're like, well, I thought I pressed it three times, and I find myself having to do it several times again. Um, and it does have some shortcuts when the light is on. So we can go one, two, release, and I'll take us into moonlight mode, as you can see. One, two, hold, and that should take us to high mode while the light is on. Those are good shortcuts. They're easy enough to understand, especially if you spend some time with UI on the Nightcore series. But it is not tactile. It does not click. When your hands are cold or frozen, as sometimes mine are in the great out of doors, you might like the clicky switch a little bit better. Against the 4.7s Quark series, uh, and some of their lights have different UIs on them. This one has a clicky switch, very similar to the Phoenix light. Tactile, you can hear it, and it's a programmable light. This one is. I can program two different modes and access each mode by rotation of the bezel, either to the loosened or the tightened position. I love the UI on the cork as well. It's not any better, not any worse than the Phoenix light. Uh, similar in a lot of different ways. Overall though, accessing the light is easy, fast in the LD20. Love it. And that means it's simple. And simple means that under stress, again, when your hands are cold, you can access it. Versatility. I got to start cruising. Out of time already. Like I said in my other vids, it can function as a lantern if you get the Phoenix light cone. This is a polycarbonate plastic piece that's high quality. Throw it into turbo mode, click your light on, and you have a very functional lantern. You see me use this in the out of doors already, and it's just awesome. It is a system changing lighting product. This one is. I don't have to carry a heavy lantern with me, just like I've said in some other videos. You need some traffic directing or singling of whatever type. You want to play lightsabers with your little brother. Here's a way to do it. Slap on that red cone, and they have a much larger one, the traffic cone of the same color, and that's another way to do it. This is a good, good way to provide red light over an area. Again, another polycarbonate Phoenix accessory. And then, of course, we have the red filter. If we go into general mode low, you have a very effective and useful red beam to use. Lots of cool products from Phoenix, and of course, it has a lanyard on it, as I've been showing you all along. They give you a lot for your money. They really do. Um, versatile, whatever POU you want to throw this in, it will excel. Just like the L1D, in some ways better, since I've talked about the variances in the beam. The improvements, if you will. Track record, overall, and this is coming from me, Net and Fancy, having used several different Phoenix lights, P3D, TK10, L2D, L1D, just outstanding. Just outstanding. I have yet to have any failures of any kind on these lights. I've dropped them many times, taken them underwater, as you've seen, in cold conditions. They just keep on trucking. They're a light built for a lifetime. You want a good gift for somebody? Buy them a Phoenix light. Buy them this LD20. Just buy them this one. This is a gift that will be beloved by whoever it is, your husband, your boyfriend, son, brother, uh, your buddy, this is a great light, LD20. The track record, as I've seen, is just flawless so far. I haven't seen any weaknesses at all in these lights. So no failures of the switch, no failures of the cap, the little minor lanyard problems I've talked about. You'll get it scuffed up, the anodizing on the barrel, Type 3 military anodizing. By the way, I love the finish on this. I do wish they made it in the olive drab again, but it'll chip and scuff with use, as you can see. That's normal. It's wear and tear. makes it look cooler. How about the cost? Around 55 bucks. A little bit more, a little bit less. That is a lot of light for your money. A lot of light. And it is a better value than the much heralded and stuck up Surefire lights. Uh, for the longest time, Surefire thought they had a lock on the market, that they had the only quality light around. And maybe the argument can be made for a number of years they did. But times have changed, just like I've said in other videos. There are a lot of great products out there. Phoenix is one of them. They are just as good, if not better, in a lot of different ways. For instance, the multi-mode capability, the ability to take double A batteries as exposed to CR123 cells, which are, how are you doing, expensive. Um, that's an improvement. The Phoenix LD20 is an amazing value for what you get. Not to say it's the only one out there that represents such value. 
Again, the quark double A square tactical by four sevens equal value. You know, the Nightcore D20, an amazing light in its own right. Some will prefer its UI better, a little bit heavier, a little bit, you know, bulkier, but still an outstanding light. Look for my reviews on this. Don't bug me, I'll get around to it, but both great lights. But the LD20 can stand toe to toe against any competitor, at least as of mid 2009. And it is a market improvement in a lot of different ways, like I've discussed over the previous L2D. What a great, great light. High value, high quality, durable, extremely bright, amazingly bright for the AA cells that it uses. Um, I just can't imagine who wouldn't want to own one of these and use it day to day. Thanks for the support. Thanks for all you do for me. And thanks for the good ratings. That keeps me trucking along and it encourages me to do more reviews and more adventures for you here at the Nut and Fancy Project. This is Nut and Fancy. LD20, signing off. See ya!